Okay. First ascents, new routes, climbing. Um, we climbed the, the, um, the thinnest spire on the left there. That's a route called, the, it's a peak called Kagatondo. It's in Mali. It's uh, in West Africa. And at the very southern end of the Sahara Desert is this beautiful spire that comes out of the desert floor. Um, when we first got there, we thought uh, that we would like to start from the bottom and get to the top. That's called traditional climbing. But actually, um, when we looked at the route through binoculars, we saw that the cracks ended halfway up, and uh, so we had to make a plan after that, because above that, it was blank. So what we did, we, um, we decided we were going to take a top-down approach, which is called sport climbing, except normally they do sport climbing on little cl cliffs. Instead, we did it on this big 600-meter cliff. Um, we strung a long rope all the way down, and um, we prepared the route, cleaned off all the loose holes, and then we started drilling... Um, Expansion bolts with battery-powered drills with solar panels. Bolts are pretty amazing. They've allowed, well, they, it's almost a double-edged sword because they've allowed the grades to expand hugely. I mean, people, what they're climbing now is what they were climbing 30 years ago. is incredibly different. But at the same time, all the uncertainty is gone. You know, the adventure is gone. And that's always been the, the sort of fight between traditional climbing and sport climbing. So anyway, we, we placed 165 bolts on this route. And what we wanted, our challenge wasn't just to get to the top now, but it was to create a, a beautiful route that you could um, you know, climb from bottom to top completely free using just the ropes as protection. So it's, it became an, an athletic endeavor rather than just a matter of getting to the top. The climbing was amazing, ab absolutely incredible. On this beautiful spire, one of some of the best rock I've ever climbed on. Now the thing is, about a first ascent is you have a responsibility to do it in good style. I mean, you can start at the bottom and just make a plan to get to the top. But, but you know, there, there, there's various different ethics and ways that you can climb. So after three weeks of hard effort, and I mean, all these athletes around here walking around the, the South Africa, I don't feel like an athlete, but it's more like being a weightlifter. Um, after three weeks of effort, we pulled all our ropes down and we climbed from the bottom to the top um, in good style, all free without falling off. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, about 10 years ago, there was all these battles between the traditional climbers and the sport climbers. The traditional climbers thought that they held the torch for um, w the way climbing was, and the sport climbers thought, no, stuff this, we the way of the future. But that's all calmed down now, and, s and it's kind of an uneasy truth. You'll find places where there are no bolt zones, like Table Mountain. If you go and put a bolt there, people are going to get pretty pissed off. And then there's other places where you can go and bolt and do sport climbing as much as you like. The reason when you open a first ascent of taking responsibility is that you set the standard, you set the bar against which others will follow and against which you will be judged by your peers. There's no rules in climbing, there's no um, things, but if you lie and cheat, there are certain ways that it will catch up to you, which brings me on to Serratore, the second part of my story. Um, I'm going to talk about this guy called Cesare Maestri. He was the, um, he was the spider of the Dolomites, an Italian guy. He claimed to have climbed to the top of Serratore, which is one of the most beautiful mountains on earth. It's in Patagonia, by the North Ridge. But he didn't quite do it, and people didn't believe him. So what he did, 12 years later, he thought, stuff this, screw the world, I'm going to come back and get to the top. So he brought a compressor and, and, a, um, and a drill, and he pretty much drilled a machine gun line of bolts up the mountain, all, you know, past all the blank sections. And um, unfortunately, he didn't even get to the top. He got to the top of the difficulties and said, okay, the route's finished, and he went down. And when he went down, the last rope length, he broke off the bolts as a statement to, to the rest of the climbers, saying, see if you can do better than this. Unfortunately, people did get better, and they managed to climb the route, and they managed to climb that last pitch without his bolts. But, I mean, the fact is, if you have started from the bottom to the top, as um, Cesare Maestri had done in anger, um, or with something to prove, or with an agenda. It's completely different to our route that we climbed on Kagatondo and Mali, which was done as a slightly different manner of expression. And it might sound semantic, but when you're opening your routes, you have to be cognizant of these ethics. So 
Now that you've got to the top of something and you've opened a new route, what exactly does it all mean? And on the surface of it, what do you get out of it? And actually, it's nothing. You, you go to the top and you come down. A friend, of mine, <laughs> a friend of mine once says, why you bother going to the top if you just got to come down again? But actually, that's a misnomer. What you get is self-discovery. You get that with any kind of climbing. More so when you open ascent, when you open a new route and doing, and doing an opening ascent, because you ex you're exploring, you're breaking new ground. The world's getting smaller, and there's only a few places that you can make your mark on the world. And you have to be creative. You have to, be, you, you have to improvise. I mean, if you drop your boot off halfway up that mountain in Alaska, you've got to make a plan, and, and it's happened, and people do. So I consider opening new routes and making first ascents almost an art form because um, you're expressing yourself and you're being true to yourself. And um, if life is an imitation of art, then so is climbing, and especially climbing a new route. But it's also a blank canvas because you can go and open a new route, and then you leave, and it gets wiped clean again, and then the next group can go up, and they can paint that canvas in their own form of expression. So, thanks very much. Andy, um, you've been climbing for over 20 years now. Is there anything that's still on your bucket list? Is there anything out there? I mean, obviously, as an inventor, we spoke about it earlier, the psyche of these peak performers is something different. I mean, is there ever going to be a stage when you say, well, that's it, I'm not going to climb anymore? Um, there, there are no limits to human potential. I mean, there's, we only get one life, and there's, so, there's, there's too many mountains to climb. So you kind of have to uh, take a step back and figure out what's the best thing that you want to climb.